Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. We're going to take on a very specific topic today. Any of you who've ever lived in like a condo or any kind of townhouse community or a, any kind of community that where there's sort of rules, a homeowner's association, let's talk about when you got narcissistic people on that homeowner's association. If you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. Romani. This is a a YouTube channel on narcissism, not a narcissism channel on YouTube too, I guess. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. We'd love to have you. But like I said, this is an esoteric video that maybe only a small subset of you will care about. But for those of you who care about this, you will care about this. Because when it comes to narcissism and homeowner associations or any other similar kind of entity, a co-op board, a condominium association, whatever you call them where you live, all I have to say is damn. Because if you aren't familiar with how these homeowner associations work, and for this video, I'm just going to keep calling them homeowner associations. These are people, they're, they're individuals who own units within a community who are, act as representatives in a way. And this is places where people pay dues for the maintenance of common features of the property, like gardens, janitorial trash. And these folks are as part of this board to make sure everything's managed properly so the property doesn't fall apart. So let's say you live, I don't know, like in a 20 unit condominium building. Over time, that building may need a new roof or external light fixtures or structural fixes. And the older the building is, the more expensive these things may get. If the property has goodies like pools and gyms, that stuff needs maintaining, fixing, or refurbishing. These boards also approve changes to units or more pointedly, typically to the outside of the unit, but also to the inside. So you need their permission to make changes to the unit, paint it, or to have certain kinds of gardening or trees, or in some cases it gets pretty oppressive. And there may be a cabal of folks who sit in judgment of your holiday decorations. Sometimes it's a company that acts as the homeowner association, but mostly I hear about smaller groups comprised of selected or elected residents who act as this homeowner association. So if we're talking about narcissism, you can see where this is going. I'm gonna tell you now, I speak from experience, having lived in a few condo complexes in my life. And I even once had the unfortunate experience of sitting on a homeowner association. Nobody else wanted to do it. And the experience was so unsettling that I moved. If someone had had a camera on my face as I sat in those meetings, there would have been a lot of eyebrow raising and furrowed brow. All of this is very messy because buildings need to have an amount of money sort of in the bank called reserves, a certain amount of money that is available to fix the big stuff. And if that's not happen, if that money's not there, that's not happening. It can be difficult for people who own the units to sell them and even for people to secure loans to live there. So there's a, these are more high stakes than you think. But these associations, the problem is they're made up of residents, people who live in these complexes who may not have any expertise in finance, real estate, law, contracting, electrical, or even common sense. And these residents may have varied histories in these buildings. Some may have been there for decades, some are new. And folks on fixed income may push back on things like rate hikes on the monthly HOA fees, as they're called. And so there can be fights and conflict and all the rest of it. Remember, these are your neighbors. They are not people you chose. They may not be people you have any respect for or any shared interests with. You didn't choose them. These associations and boards, like I said, are typically comprised of volunteers. And while some of these are decent people who actually care about their community or may just have more time on their hands because they're retired or work fewer hours or actually do bring a certain expertise, some folks just like power and control. And they can be quite narcissistic and make these homeowner associations an absolute nightmare. In some ways, these home homeowner associations are like local politics and school boards. Small, small places, big fights, big personalities, and it gets ugly fast. HOAs, I've seen, I mean, homeowner associations, I've seen them involve manipulation, triangulation, gaslighting, intimidation, vindictiveness, callousness, stonewalling, entitlement, all of those things can be business as usual for more than a few of these associations. People who sit in these groups may be passive aggressive. They may love to communicate via nasty little notes and petty emails. There's lots of victimized narrative. It's not fair. I have to do this or pay this money. None of you understand my situation. 
But here is where this becomes an actually really potentially a, a dangerous issue. The petty, passive aggressive, exhausting, manipulative behavior within a homeowner association can mean that the bullies win. And if they are not able to make good decisions around uncomfortable or unpopular things like rate hikes, or have a good understanding of what not having enough money in the reserve account can do, and don't authorize essential repairs because it means they won't be popular, then you can have a building that actually has structural and safety hazards. And, the, and obviously, and less pressing, is the fact that the valuation of the property drops so that people who have invested into this property don't realize the full gains, mostly because narcissistic people are just grinding in their heels and wanting things to be the way they want them. The struggle is real, folks. I've actually received multiple emails about this particular topic. Now, obviously, none of you who might have a homeowner association where you live, you may not want to march into the homeowner meeting and say, hey, all of you are narcissists. You never want to call them out. But knowing some of this may shed some light on the toxic dynamics that populate these spaces and which are often really sensitively felt because this space is, is home. It can be terribly tense to live in a complex and have a member of the homeowner association jump out of the elevator when you get in it or find notes on your door or your windshield or you find that you're being treated as a pariah because you decided to welcome the joy of an inflatable snowman into your holiday display. I must say I do remember once living in one building where there was one particularly difficult association member. I had dragged a Christmas tree down. I was coming back to sweep it up and she noticed that I had left some pine needles behind from a holiday tree. The broom was on another floor of the building and I had taken it down to the disposal. Before I could even get back, she left a note saying, I know it's you. I see where the needles lead to. It was all very sinister and bizarre. I mean, she could have just left a note saying, hey, we noticed the needles. We just asked that you clean them up. I was going to get the broom. I was happy to do it, obviously. But it was the kind of thing where even if my kids bounced a ball once or twice in a hallway, I'd hear, I know it's you, taped to my door. I moved. So to the sane HOA members out there, all I can tell you, because I can almost guarantee you've got one difficult person on your board with you, document everything. Recognize that the difficult members will not change. Consider also using a mediator or attorney to help with the proceedings, so that's going to cost more money. Try and get a critical mass of agreeable people as a counterweight to the antagonistic ones that seem naturally drawn to these associations. And don't let these people pull you into the passive aggressive mud. I don't know enough about real estate to know if members can be forced out of one of these associations. And sometimes these are elected terms. So voting out a toxic member may be necessary as well. But frankly, choose wisely. Like all things related to narcissism, discernment is everything. I didn't know this. Before you move into a building, do your homework. Find a way to get local knowledge on how triangulated or toxic the association is, if that's possible, and understand their track record. And sometimes, and I got to tell you, I found it out the hard way, you got to move. A toxic association can actually affect the value of your home. And I got to say, the impact on your sanity doesn't have a dollar value. Do you really want, for example, let's say you have a family member visiting you for a few days, for them to be stalked because the antagonistic surveillance team of the homeowner association thinks you're running an Airbnb? It's a shame that we can't assign a narcissism score to homeowning associations so buyers can beware. But whether you are already in this situation or scoping one out, this is no joke. Narcissistic, antagonistic people in these roles are often in these roles, and they're often the ones who belly up and want to take control of everything. It can really do a number on you. It can really do a number on your real estate. Again, it seems like such a strange little topic, but... It is sometimes these sorts of little organizations where we see such the, the impact of such toxic people. And I got to tell you, it's, it's the sort of thing where I'll read these message boards about this because it's kind of stuff I'm curious about. And I'll hear people enabling, well, they just care about the property. Really, do they? So I guess the only way to care about the property is to be rude and high conflict. And lots of people make excuses. Oh, they don't mean anything by it. Yeah, they do because it's hurting you. And so, like I said, no joke. And if you live in one of those places, 
really, really pay attention because the decisions they make can actually not always be in your best interest. And sometimes it may mean stepping into a role in that association. But oh, if you're going to do that, make sure you have one hell of a good therapist set up too. Thanks again.